further back in time we go, the more widespread was shamanic healing. But representations are hard to come by or go unrecognized. In this Zimbabwean rock mural from Silozwane, a woman lays on hands. This healing ceremony was painted on rock in the Tatrar Akakus of Libya. Women are chanting and dancing with rattles. In front, a masked woman sits next to a person with distended belly and is shaking a gourd rattle, face painted or wearing a mask. Oral tradition preserves memory of medicine women so powerful they could even revive the dead, like Kulutugu Baga, the ninth sorceress of Mande in Mali. Also in Mali, the Boso people remember the powerful Tungutu, Pasini Jobu. Her renown as the greatest of all Tungutu and her healing power caused the king to seek her out to restore his favorite ram to life. Pasini Jobu made ceremony, dancing as the Kie played music. They played and sang faster and faster still. Pasini Jobu began to get into a frenzy. Her power was awakened. The Kie played and sang and beat time with ever increasing quickness. The power of Pasini Jobu grew stronger. The Kie beat time. Pasini Jobu screamed. Pasini Jobu rose up. She floated aloft to the clouds. She changed her arms into wings like the great birds have. Then she slowly sank down over the ram. Pasini Jobu rested over the ram for the space of six days. During this time, she covered the ram with her outstretched wings. On the seventh day, she got up. The ram was alive. She had revived it with her wings, as Isis did for Osar. Medea of Colchis also was said to have revived a ram, but by putting it into a cauldron with incantations and herbs of power. Greek accounts emphasize the herbal wisdom of this priestess. Her pharmakeia, which also means witchcraft in Greek, some have her restoring youth and vitality to humans in her cauldron. Caridwen also made an elixir of immortality in this way, and other Welsh tales speak of cauldrons of regeneration. On the Breton Isle of Senna, nine priestesses were guardians of a sacred cauldron in which they simmered herbs for a drink of immortality and resurrection. The Gauls made pilgrimage to Senna to consult these oracles and to seek healing. Pomponius Mela described the shamanic powers for which these Galitzene were renowned. To rouse the sea and the wind by their incantations. To turn themselves into whatever animal form they choose. To cure diseases which among others are incurable to know what is to come and foretell it. In the Kalevala, Ilmatar restores her son to life by recovering his dismembered body and reintegrating it through her powerful incantations. She sends a bee to bring back a drop of divine honey from the highest heavens, and with this she revives Lemminkainen. The Manchu epic Nishan Shaman recounts how Teteke went to the underworld to retrieve the soul of a dead boy. She fanned the soul back into his empty body and he came to life. Power to revive the dead was also recounted of the Tibetan Buddhist adept Yeshe Tsogyal. Traces of medicine women survive in Europe in spite of persecution. In this French miniature, an energetic healer makes passes over the sick man's body while whirling her other arm, 
the spirals painted above and below showing the flow of power. Herbal medicine too involved chanting prayers to the plants while gathering, preparing, and giving them. This Italian healer is applying a poultice of poppy for headache while sweating the patient. Sweat houses and saunas were places of healing as well as cleansing, and were ceremonial spaces for the Lithuanians, Finns, and Slavs, including these Czechs. Russians called the sweat house Božina, divine, by tradition a place of peace. These women are massaging, stretching, dipping, and whisking with birch brooms. Temascal was an important place of healing in old Mexico. Here women are pouring water into the clay lodge, shown in cross-section. Aztec priestesses of the Temascal offered water and counsel and invoked Temescal Dosi, grandmother of the sweat house, whose black painted face appears over the entrance. Mother of the gods and us all, whose creative and life-giving power shown in the sweat house, also named the House of Flowers, the place where she sees sacred things, sets to right what has been deranged in human bodies, makes young and tender things growing and strong, and where she aids and cures. <laughs>